Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is Sheena with Crooked Calligraphy. So as a professional calligrapher, my favorite white ink of all time is this stuff, Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, but it's actually a little bit trickier to use straight out of the jar than you would think. So in today's quick video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. So when you first open up a jar of Dr. Ph. Martin's Bleed Proof White, this is often what you get. So you can see that it's sort of super clumpy, thick. Um, it'll just get all over you. And it's kind of, the, the liquid inside is kind of separated from the solid. So if you try to dip your, your pointed nib in here, I mean, it's just kind of too thick to really flow nicely from your pointed nib, right? So you can kind of see that I'm, I'm just having a hard time, it's just not flowing. So what can you do about this? One thing that you can do is just add some water a little bit at a time to the top. Take some sort of stick, you can use an old chopstick, this is just the back of a paintbrush, and kind of stir it up. Get some of the thick stuff down in there. And the trick here is that you do not need to worry about going all the way down into the bottom of this bottle. If you're just going to dip your nib into the top of here, you only need enough liquidy stuff at the top to get your nib in, right? So don't worry about getting all the way to the bottom and getting the right consistency, just worry about getting the right consistency at the top. So this is about how much I've dipped my stick in to mix. And let's give it a try. Okay, so you can clearly see here, way too thick, and just the telltale signs are, you know, the ink not flowing out of the nib, skipping a lot on the hairlines. It just means you haven't added quite enough water for it to flow nicely from the nib. This is what it's like when it's just right. Um, and there's a margin for error here. You can have it a little bit more or less watery and it'll still flow nicely from your nib. All the hairlines are solid and the same width, they flow nicely, all the downstrokes, um, you know, the ink has flowed automatically from the nib. It just has a nice, smooth, consistent look to it. And here, I've added too much water, and it looks sort of okay when you're first dipping into the ink, but then as it runs out, you can just see here by the end, it gets way too thin, and the ink just becomes kind of see-through, and that means that you've added too much water. So if it's too thick, obviously you can add a few drops of water at a time. If it's too watery, just leave the jar out overnight and some of the water will evaporate and it'll get it a bit thicker for you again. So this is definitely one way to go about it is just to keep adding a little bit of water to the top of your jar, stir up that top portion, dip your nib directly in and um, go with, you know, go until you get the consistency that flows nicely from your nib. The problem with this method, for me anyway, is that once you get sort of deeper into this jar, once you've sort of used up the top, it's hard to get your nib sort of deep into this jar and really dip easily. Um, it can be kind of a pain. So, and it can be a little bit difficult to maintain this consistency sort of always at the top without dipping into that thicker stuff at the bottom. So what I prefer to do is put that bleed proof white into a separate little jar. So this is a half ounce plastic jar. I got this from John Neal Bookseller, but you can find them at art stores. Um, really just, you know, look around for them. But I do like to make sure they screw on tight. <laughs> and confession, this does happen every single time I open up my jar of bleed proof white is, I get this loveliness. So 
Let me clean that up. Okay. Aside from that flakiness happening every time I open up this jar, I like this method because it just, this jar for me is easier to dip into with my nib and it's a little bit easier to control the consistency. You will still in this jar get some separation. I don't know if you can see there how sort of the liquidy part has separated from the solid. So you will still need to stir up this jar especially if you haven't used this ink in a long time. So when it sits, it will just separate. That's just the nature of it. Um, but you can just see, I don't know, to me, it's just easier to stir up this little jar and sort of control the consistency here. So those are just some tips on how to use bleed proof white, how to get it to the right consistency. Um, the key is to aim for the consistency of heavy cream and to really test it out with your nib and see if that consistency is working for you and tweak with a few drops of water at a time in order to get it to flow really nicely for you. Once you get that consistency right, Bleed Proof White is really an awesome, awesome white ink. You can see that it's very opaque, right? It covers smoothly and consistently. There's no um, flashing through. It dries nice and um, water resistant and sticks nicely to the paper um, and it won't sort of it's not too delicate it won't rub off once it's dry um, and it just flows nicely from the pen so i highly recommend this bleed proof white and as long as you know how to approach it when you buy it you'll find that it lasts a really really long time and it will really work well for you so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you wanna know exactly where to get this Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and all the other tools that I recommend as a professional calligrapher and that I use on a daily basis, head to calligraphytoolkit.com, calligraphytoolkit.com, and you can get a free PDF listing exactly where to get all of my supplies. See you next time.